International travelers will have to wait till next Saturday, the 5th of September, before flights will be allowed to resume. The resumption earlier slated for the 29th of August was postponed by one week to ensure that all non-aviation logistics are put in place. Director General of the NCAA, Musa Nuhu, revealed this at the Presidential Task Force on the COVID-19 briefing in Abuja. With us in the studio is aviation consultant and founder and group CEO, Global Investment and Trade Company Limited, Baba Yusuf. Nice to see you in the studio. Good morning. Thank you for having Great. me. Great. Now, uh, when it comes to resumption, uh, everyone was quite excited until uh, it was shifted a little uh, with a few, just about a week or so, but it's still okay because a lot of, from the comments we have heard, uh, they're saying it is good to put things in proper shape before uh, international flights resume. But walk us through basically, what does it take to prepare for international flights? What kind of precautions are we looking at? Thank you very much. Uh, like you said, it's, uh, it's not abnormal to extend the time. Mm -hmm. The key word in aviation is safety. Yeah. And one cannot be over prepared you know, regarding safety, especially given the situation we found ourselves globally. Uh, looking at international airspace opening, it's critical that at this point, the point of uh, exit for people traveling out of Nigeria, will demonst we demonstrate capacity and importantly the integrity of our protocols and processes for you know, travel that will comfort other countries to first of all allow the travel to take place and then secondly that gives assurances that there's a first layer of safety net if you like before people travel out of the country. So the PTF uh, the Minister of Aviation and uh, all the aviation authorities and stakeholders are doing the right thing. It is better for us to be sure-footed, you know, before we embark on this. Recall that it's been many months since uh, we've been having downtimes. Equipments have been idle. Uh, and the protocols need to be fine-tuned, you know, before we are sure of that. And one of the points made by the DG of NCA, Ms. Uh, Musanu, is that um, especially looking at the preparedness of the non-aviation you know, stakeholders keen into the aviation process flow. You know, this is very important. Uh, and I think that is uh, what is happening. Working through the processes, most importantly, are the protocols, mm -hmm. you know, from the entrance of the airport to the boarding gate. And also vice versa, you know, coming back into the country. We know that there have been some, uh, if you like, test scenarios with the evacuation flights that have been taking place in and out, and uh, also the uh, importation of the test kits. Mm -hmm. But now is we are going live on international <laughs> travel, <laughs> you know, business right. and social. All so right. it's very critical that we have these protocols in place. Aviation stakeholders will have what is called the protocols captured into what is called the SOP, the Standard Operating Procedures, and synchronized with the operations of the airports in line with the NCAA regulations as well as ICAO. Okay. Mm. But uh, as much as uh, we are preparing towards mm -hmm. uh, the reopening of the international uh, airspace. What concerns uh, do you have seeing that uh, the pandemic is not yet over yeah. and uh, there are countries who are still challenged with this uh, more than uh, Nigeria is as we speak? Critical is testing capacity, testing capabilities and the sustainability of this test protocol, uh, ensuring compliance with the protocols moving forward. Uh, we w I am very, very much concerned about that. Now everybody's eyes will be on the ball, you know, the travelers, the regulators, everybody would like to see these protocols in place and following through. But you agree with me that sustainability is key. When the domestic airspace was opened, we saw uh, leaders that are supposed to lead by example are actually flouting the protocols. Mm -hmm. And that we think may happen again. And over and beyond that, the players, the operators also, how will they be consistent in ensuring that, apart from being consistent and insistent that these protocols are complied with? Because the international stakeholders will also be observing how we operate here, even though they have their own safety protocols. When you arrive in country, mm. you know, safety is that you ensure even before uh, the other countries are, are doing the right thing before the, pa uh, the, p the passengers, you know, board craft, aircrafts to, to other countries. All right. What do you think will change with the, with the boarding process and uh, sitting arrangement and things like that within the craft? 
Well, the, I think uh, my thoughts will align with international best practices, the international protocols put in place by ICAO, IATA, and um, especially Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. That is what will be the process that will be complied with. Uh, regarding the process itself in terms of um, operations, we expect probably in the first few weeks to months hiccups, which is normal, uh, delays in flights possibly, even though we have been advised to be in the airport three hours before boarding, but you know how it is. We have cultural issues, we have logistics issues, for example, in Lagos, the third mainland bridge is undergoing construction. Mm. These are all logistics challenges that will key into the overall process itself. But by and large, the, the exciting thing is we are coming back on board and importantly we follow the protocols and then we perfect the system as time goes on, I believe in the next couple of months things will ease up. Regarding the spacing in the aircraft, there's been a lot of, um, if you like, school of thoughts about that. But I think the regulations, international and domestic, have overtaken you know, preferences or economic considerations. Okay. And I believe all stakeholders will key into that. All right. Now, ahead of the resumption, uh, the federal government is saying that it will be applying the principles of reciprocity in granting permission to airlines to resume uh, operations in and out of the country. Are, are there implications to this and how would this work? Yeah, I think it's long time coming. Not just in the case of aviation, if you, if you recall or all of us that are following the trend of events the past decade or years, Nigeria is always playing the big brother role, extending the hands of fellowship while we don't get that reciprocity, as you mentioned. Coming to aviation, I think it's, it's the way to go. Uh, yes, possibly sometimes the actions taken by those countries may be based on some shortcomings on our part. But largely, if you look at it and you follow what you call aviation politics and also international politics, sometimes these actions are taken not in the overall interest of the stakeholders, but possibly for those home countries. Reciprocity, uh, I think, is a win-win in this kind of situation, especially given the fact that there is an econ a socio-economic impact of, um, you know, on it. So I support that. Uh, the only thing I will say is we'll be a bit cautious Whenever we want to reciprocate, we also need to look at the dimension, the implications, before we take those steps. I don't think it should be, you know, a tit for tat kind of thing. When you say cautious, uh, uh, how do you mean? Yeah, because if you want to reciprocate an action taken by another country, not just within the context of aviation, mm -hmm. you need to look, step back and look at, you know, the root cause uh, and the genesis of how you came into that situation. And that will, you know, de determine the next steps you take. Because if you just base on an action, you react. Possibly, the consequences may be more beyond what you expect in the mid to long term. Possibly, on the short term, it may look like, um, you know, you got the results you wanted. So overall, if actions are taken by a country with regards to aviation in this context, we need to go back and look at the root cause. Are there things we needed to do that we didn't do? And to that extent, if we need to do that going forward, we correct it. Sometimes you don't need to reciprocate. Sometimes you need to take that as a feedback, mm -hmm. correct, and move on. Now, the, the point there is uh, you, you mentioned the issue of aviation politics earlier on. Mm -hmm. Now, the policy of reciprocity will be seen as, of course, it's just logical that if you say we, sh we, we can't come, then, of course, we okay. can't go and you can't come. Mm -hmm. If you say we should come, then we should. But on the other hand, if you flip the coin, it looks like a catch-up policy. Mm -hmm. How about our own decision to say, okay, this is, apart from the countries that have the policy of reciprocity, this is our own stand and this is what we want. I agree with you, but that goes back to uh, the overall, you know, strategy mm -hmm. of um, how we want to run our, in this context, aviation. Mm -hmm. And um, you always we always need to operate from the position of strength. And how do I mean? You need to look at how you stand in the scheme of things, your infrastructure, you know, your economic policy, and how you support the local aviation industry for them to be able to be strong and robust enough to be competitive, because the bottom line is it's a competitive environment. So, mm -hmm. and it's all about um, economics, it's all about business and social. So we need to go back to the drawing board 
and look at the overall frame, strategic framework for aviation and see where we need to do some tweaks and uh, where we need to bridge some gaps. That is what will put us in that competitive position for us to always say reciprocity will work for us. All right. Now, uh, the, uh, the industry is said to be one of the worst hit uh, with regards to the pandemic. I, I wonder now that we are looking at resuming international flights, mm. uh, how this uh, will perhaps impact uh, the fund, the fundings and the generation of funds for the aviation sector. Yeah, domestic and international, uh, it will come back, it will bounce back, but it will take a long time. There is a downtime that has uh, impacted hugely on the sector in terms of equipment, in terms of aircraft, in terms of operations. By and large, there's a big hit on the cash flow of this um, aviation stakeholders. And uh, for them to, first of all, recover, the focus is first of all to recover and then try to see how we can move on moving forward. So it is critical that um, all stakeholders sit down and go back to the drawing board in trying to see how you know you survive you, you you bounce back you recover and then you 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 are able to move on but aviation will kick back because interestingly aviation is a critical platform for social economic well-being and existence globally mm -hmm. you know so as soon as the airspace is open in short to midterm you will see social economic activities kicking up All right. Let's leave the conversation now. Baba Yusuf, thank you so much for speaking. I appreciate with that. Us. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. Thank you.